Warcraft 3 Reforged launched this week, and it's been met with some pretty respectable user ratings on Metacritic, currently sitting at an 8 out of 10. Wait. Wait, point 0.8 out of 10. What the f- Hey folks, this is Riker, with a gaming news wrap-up video where we discuss the happenings of the week. This week's major topics include the Warcraft 3 remaster fiasco, the announcement of Torchlight 3, and a couple other little news stories. As always, discussion timestamps can be found in the video description below. You just gotta click them to skip ahead. But right before you do that, just a quick reminder to ring that sub notification bell to be alerted of new Saturday episodes and stay up to date with gaming news highlights. Our first story is a quick one. A new trailer has released for the remake of Final Fantasy VII, showcasing both cinematics and in-game gameplay. Fan favorite Red 13 makes an appearance and Cloud looks pretty damn good in a dress. The link to that, as all links, can be found in the video description below. In other quick news, Wizards of the Coast, creators of Magic the Gathering and current owners of Dungeons and Dragons, have opened up a new video game development studio. The new studio, called Archetype Entertainment, will be headed by BioWare alums James Olin and Chad Robertson. Now, James Olin has quite an impressive pedigree. He served as creative director and lead designer on Baldur's Gate, Dragon Age, Neverwinter Nights, Star Wars The Old Republic, and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. And the first project that this new studio will be working on is described as a multiplayer role-playing game set in an all-new science fiction universe that will send players on a story-driven epic where choices they make will have real consequences on how their story unfolds. And it's specified that it will not be related to MTG or D&D. At first blush, it sounds like they're describing Mass Effect. So if this is a way for these devs to get back to making good Mass Effect style games, then hey, I'm all for that. All right, on to Warcraft 3 Reforged. Now, in what was perhaps the most exciting announcement at BlizzCon 2018, a BlizzCon that wasn't good for certain other franchises, Blizzard announced that they would be remastering Warcraft 3 and showed us some very impressive looking footage. Now, after a number of delays, the remaster finally launched this week. It's available in the Blizzard shop for $30 with a deluxe edition available for $40. And for this price, you're getting both the base game and its expansion, the Frozen Throne, all bundled together. Now, as of right now, based on almost 7,000 user ratings, the game has a Metacritic score of 0.8 out of 10. For comparison, Fallout 76 has 2.7. The critic review score is sitting at a 63 out of 100, which, as far as critic reviews go, might as well be a 1 out of 10. So what went wrong? How did something that seemed like an easy win, a slam dunk for Blizzard, turn into this catastrophe? Well, right out the gate, some players were experiencing a number of technical issues. Games would start and automatically end. Some had FPS problems. Certain features that were in the base Warcraft 3 game were simply gone. Things like automated tournaments, clans, ladders, and even custom campaigns as a feature were no longer available. And then Blizzard even failed to deliver on some of the promises they made of features coming to Reforged, some of which was promoted in the actual advertising or promotion of the game all the way back to BlizzCon 2018. Specifically, in-game cutscenes, while redone or improved, were nowhere near as improved as originally shown at BlizzCon 2018. Now, some people have been very hyperbolic about Warcraft 3 Reforged, and something that I always stress is that it is very important to separate honest criticism from exaggeration or false reports. Once you start getting false information out there, once your side of a fight starts spouting lies, you weaken your side completely. There are people out there saying that the cutscenes have not been redone at all. That is simply not true. I'll put up here a comparison of the BlizzCon 2018 footage, the release footage, and the original cinematic, all for the same scene. Each of these three is clearly different. The Reforged cutscene is certainly better than the base game, but it's also a far cry from what was shown at BlizzCon 2018. The graphical improvements made to the game, which is mostly what has been done in this remaster, largely via importing models from World of Warcraft, in my opinion is something that is certainly notable over the base Warcraft 3 
game. The graphics are better, the cutscenes are improved, there are changes to maps. The issue is that based on the promotional material, the degree of these changes isn't quite matching up. And that's also a big part of why people were upset. Warcraft 3 Reforged, to some people, in some people's minds, was going to be a remake of Warcraft 3. The promotional material overpromised, and the subsequent release underdelivered. Especially given that Warcraft 3 Reforged failed to meet a couple different release windows, it felt like it was being pushed back to truly put out something spectacular. And another reason people were upset was because this game has been available in beta for a while, and a lot of beta feedback has gone out that Blizzard seemingly has not acted upon. And yet another reason people are upset is that the launch of Warcraft 3 Reforged basically has rendered it such that you can no longer play the old Warcraft 3 client. Now, whether you have Reforged or not, you launch the same client. And so even if you did not buy Reforged, you now have the same problems that Reforged has. You have now lost the same features that Reforge dropped from the base Warcraft 3 game. It is now one launcher with a toggle button to go between Reforged and Classic. So for instance, a lot of base Warcraft 3 players suddenly had a lot of connection issues and couldn't join properly multiplayer games because that's a problem that Reforged players were having. Now odds are Blizzard will likely over time fix these issues, but perhaps people would be less upset if there was some grace period where the old launcher would still work and there would be a gradual migration while issues are resolved. Now my personal experience with Reforged has been positive. I say this as someone who has not played Warcraft 3 in over 10 years. Hell, probably over 15 years. It's been a long time since I really looked into what Reforged would contain, so I went into it just expecting a simple remaster. I played a few hours of the single player campaign, I had fun, I did not personally experience any bugs, any crashes, any FPS issues, everything ran fine. I appreciated the improved graphics, the improved cutscenes, the revisions to some of the maps even. But then after, when I looked back and saw everything that Blizzard had promised, and particularly that 2018 cutscene at BlizzCon, I certainly got a bit of a bait and switch impression. Now I wish I can say that the anger ends there, but there's one last thing, and it's a huge thing, that has further contributed to the absolute outrage and the massive review bombing of this release. Blizzard quietly changed the terms in their end user license agreement in a way that basically negatively impacts modders. Well, modders and people who like mods, which is a huge portion of the Warcraft 3 audience. That's something that I always loved about old Blizzard games, StarCraft, Warcraft 3, was playing the use map settings maps, basically the modded maps. The first new regulation is that copyrighted material is no longer permitted in any of these modded maps. So a number of old popular custom maps that were based on certain franchises like Dragon Ball Z now all of a sudden are effectively banned. And since old players can't keep playing the old client and have to play the new client, that means that these custom maps are just going to be gone or unavailable. And the next stipulation is basically that anything that you make within the map editor belongs to Blizzard, including the intellectual property rights. So let's say, for instance, you make a custom map within the map editor, call it Armor of the Old Ones, and it becomes super popular to the point that you feel, hey, I want to make this into its own game. Let me find a game engine that could uh, support something similar, and you want to just basically port it over into its own proprietary game engine and make money. Well, you can't because Blizzard owns it. Not only that, but Blizzard can then take your idea and publish it into its own game and doesn't have to give you a dime or even credit. Now to clarify, it's difficult to copyright the idea of a game, for instance, the MOBA genre, but you can copyright the characters, the story, the art, the everything that's an asset. So that means I could, in theory, still take my idea of Armor of the Old Ones and then remake it as an entirely new game with a new title and new characters and new story and new art assets and just keep the basic skeleton of the genre of game. I should also specify that in general, a lot of these scary legal clauses are there to protect a company's interests and are almost never enforced. In all of Blizzard's history, there was really maybe just one case that they would have wanted to pursue with these legal clauses, and that's the case of Dota. And a lot of people are seeing this as Blizzard effectively being butthurt 
over losing Dota, or rather failing to recognize the opportunity to buy out the creator of Dota themselves. No, Valve ended up being the ones to do that. So then Blizzard tried to create its own version, Blizzard Dota, but then Valve went after them for taking the name Dota, the two companies settled out of court, and then Blizzard changed the name from Blizzard Dota to Blizzard All-Stars, and eventually to Heroes of the Storm, and after that, Dota 2 wound up being very successful, and Heroes of the Storm appreciably less so. So, even if Blizzard had no negative intent with any of this, even if Everything Blizzard did here was simply to protect its own interests, its own intellectual property. Given the history with Dota, given the other reasons that Warcraft 3 Reforged is being poorly received, this just serves as yet another issue to cast Blizzard in a negative light and further enrage the player base. But onto some happy news. Torchlight 3 was revealed this week. And by revealed, I mean Torchlight Frontiers was rebranded as Torchlight 3, as massive changes were announced to the game to make it more like a true sequel to the fantastic game that was Torchlight 2. And the devs attribute this to all the feedback from alpha testers. Let's read off some of the great news. Along with the name change comes a major shift in our design approach to Torchlight 3. Torchlight 3 will be released as a premium title. For one box price, you will own the game and be able to play the way you want, online or off. Let me quickly interrupt there for anyone who might be confused by the term premium title. That just means what games always were in the past. It just means a game you buy once and you own everything. We have to specify premium now because of all the freemium and other silly monetization models that premium basically just means classic regular game model. Accompanying this transition to a more traditional release, we will also be moving over to Steam as a platform for PC distribution. Already two big wins right there. The game now follows the classic act structure from previous titles. Horizontal progression has been removed, so all frontier specific levels, gear stats, and scaling has been removed as well. We are returning our progression systems to better work in tandem with this. Most zones are now private by default to give a better play experience. Players can still meet each other in public town levels and form parties to play together in instanced combat zones. When creating your character, you can now select online or offline mode. Characters made in offline mode do not require an internet connection to play, but will also not be able to participate in multiplayer games. And last piece of good news, we have removed the in-game real money store. Pretty much every single announcement made there is a huge win for the games, for the franchise, for the devs, for the fans. Alpha testing of the new version has begun, and Torchlight 3 is slated to release this summer via Steam. Now, project lead Tyler Thompson also had more to say in a blog post. Since the day we announced, we've heard concerns about free-to-play and horizontal progression. Our shift to premium and a linear world structure brings us back to Torchlight's roots. Personally, I'm most excited about the pacing changes to character levels, monster variety, monster spawning, and environment variety. The grind is gone. The frontiers have been rearranged sequentially with a new central questing storyline leading through the game start to finish, and almost all quests have been rewritten around this story. Each frontier now has its own town. Now, last March, I released a video with my impressions on the Torchlight Frontiers Alpha. And one of the first things I said in that video was... Now, important to note is that this is not Torchlight 3. Well, looks like... That's no longer the case. In case you haven't, I encourage you to check out that video to truly appreciate why so much of this announcement is good news. As a brief summary, I liked a lot of what I saw, but most of my concerns revolved around the MMO elements and the horizontal progression. I liked the idea of horizontal progression, I liked that the devs were experimenting, but I was concerned that it felt less rewarding, less satisfying. I wasn't fond of the old-school MMO-style quests. I wasn't fond of the MMO style of grinding up areas early on to progress to the next area. Overall, my takeaway was that if you don't like MMOs, you probably would not like the MMO elements in Torchlight Frontiers. If you did like MMOs, you might like them. So it sounds like now they're still wanting to deliver a multiplayer experience, but something that's going to be more akin to Path of Exile, where you could still have areas where you group with other people. You can still share your little fort, which was the part of multiplayer I like the most, but overall it'll feel a lot more like a spiritual successor to Torchlight 2, which was a fantastic game. And to wrap up with some super quick Diablo 3 news, the patch notes for Season 20 for the PTR have gone live. 
we're getting three new class sets and a season theme that should change every build in some way because now you can cube any item power into any of the three slots. Do be sure to check out my video on the topic for full details. And that's going to wrap up this week's video. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind-the-scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more gaming content.